your existing business with some great tools and techniques um, that um, Greg's gonna, gonna go over with us today. Yep, hey Liz, thanks for having me here. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Looks like you have a visitor there, a cat or something. I have a cat. The <laughs> yeah, the wonderful the world computer. of working from home, you know, for people that are watching, you know, we're still in the COVID-19. This is May of 2020, so everybody's working from home still in most areas. So anyways, we'll just jump right into it. Yeah, so for people that don't know me, I'm a serial entrepreneur, real estate developer, coach and mentor. I've been in the uh, self-employed since 1997. I transitioned from the W-2 world, went in the Navy right out of high school, uh, did not go to college and um, worked in the corporate world for about eight years after the Navy and began my entrepreneurial journey in 1997. And since that time, uh, and during a seven year period right after that, you know, when I started my first company, um, I built it into a uh, $30 million business from nothing, a, a remodeling hand, handyman company, built that into a $30 million business from scratch with no money, no connections, no nothing, just hard work and doing it the hard way. I started 12 other businesses along the way, sold and exited all those before 0405. And then kind of became a, an investor developer outsourcing, you know, ever since then. And, um, you know, so that's my long story short. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. Uh, but what I really am at heart is I'm a marketer. I'm a creative. I like to create stuff out of nothing. I like to create opportunity. I like to solve problems. You know, that's really what entrepreneurship is all about. So today we're talking about entrepreneurship, how to start, grow and scale any business, whether online or off. And, uh, and more particularly in this environment in 2020, you know, more people are making that shift to online and online businesses. And, you know, there's a lot of people that may be watching this or listening to this that, you know, are in the corporate world, the W2 world, and, and they've got a long career and they want to make that transition into self-employment. And, you know, that's a question I get all the time is, I mean, how do I do that? You know, I have this great job, this great income, these great benefits, but I really want more. I really feel like I was created for more and I feel like I'm being held back where I am. But man, it's going to be hard to leave a, you know, $200,000, $300,000, $400,000 a year salary, you know, to go out and start your own business. And, you know, that for a lot of small businesses is more than what they make, you know, for the, the, the baker, the restaurant owner, um, you know, the attorney, the accountant that has their own practice, even physicians now, certain doctors, you know, professionals that have their own business aren't making two, three, four hundred thousand a year. So that's a, that's a hard thing for people to get their mind around. How do you actually replace that? How do you do that? And, you know, that's kind of where it all starts. So the journey to entrepreneurship, number one, starts in your mind. It starts with a mindset. So it's believing the possible, believing what's real, believing that you can actually get out there, start your own business and, and do something and create something out of nothing. And what you're really doing when I talk about mindset, you know, that, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. But it's more specifically when I talk about mindset, it's number one, believing in what's possible putting away the negative thoughts and the naysayers and those, you know, those thoughts in your head that when you think about doing something, and I know people listening to this, including you, have had ideas and have had, and very passionate about something that they've wanted to do. And then you talk yourself out of it, you know, and it could be a business venture. It could be a trip you want to take. It could be just something new you want to try. And it sounds great. You get yourself all worked up. And then in your head, you're like, ah, well, that's not going to work because of this. Or yeah, I'm not going to do that because of that. So, one thing that I want to talk about is, you know, on limiting beliefs real quick, you've got to fix that mindset and understand that everything is possible. Anything is possible. If you believe in yourself and if you find somebody or something else that's already existing and successful doing what it is you want to do, um, then you've got proof that what you want to do is real. There's tons of people making, you know, six and seven figures online with businesses, authors, speakers, coaches, trainers, um, you know, people selling programs, courses, products, you know, things like that. It's happening every day. Um, there's people out there sell, selling um, programs on how to navigate Disney and not wait in line and make, making $10,000 a month with a $27 program on how to hack the lines at Disney. So you're guaranteed to never have to wait in line. So, you know, there's any number of things that you can do from an online standpoint. And then when it comes to offline, um, you know, there's franchise models out there. There's, there's all kinds of business models out there that, have been doing what it is you want to do for a long time. There's nothing new under the sun. Um, the, you know, eventually we're going to find another TikTok or another Facebook or something like that's going to pop up. But other than the world of technology that doesn't exist today and the world of business and the world of helping people and solving problems, people have been doing that and making good money at it for years and years and years, well before we all came along. So all you have to do is find that business, find that individual, find that entrepreneur 
that is successful doing what you want to do and then reverse engineer what it is they're doing. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can, you know, follow them, you can buy their program, you can go to work for them, you can collaborate with them. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. But um, so that's the first step is you got to, you got to shift that mindset. You've got to train yourself to say, you know what? I don't know what I don't know. Here's somebody who's successful doing what I want to do. I'm just going to do what they say. I'm just going to do what they're doing and do what they say and not try to reinvent the wheel, not convince myself that I know better, I know more. You know, if you're somewhere you don't want to be, and if you're not making the money you want to make, if you're not in the job you want to have, if you don't, if you're not in that business you've always wanted to start, if you haven't written that book you've always wanted to write, there's a program or a person or a business model out there that you can follow that has done it and is doing it step by step so you don't have to figure it out. All you got to do is follow the steps. So that's number one on mindset. You know, then you got to figure out what is your mission? You know, what's your purpose? What's your passion? What is it that you want to do? So opportunity is created in solving problems. Entrepreneurship is creating opportunity out of nothing through solving problems. So, you know, generally people spend money for two reasons, to solve a problem, you know, put away a pain or to bring pleasure in terms of, you know, entertainment, you know, feeling good, um, good food, you know, whatever it is that brings pleasure, good food, travel, fun, entertainment, those types of things. People spend big money to bring pleasure into their life, and they spend big money, even bigger money, to solve a pain or a problem that they're having. So what you want to think first and foremost is, what are your gifts and talents? What were you created to do? What is it that's on your heart that comes easy to you and natural, that you have a passion that you want to share with others or help others do? You know, that is your gifting that you were created to share with the world and help other people solve problems. So whether that is through a traditional brick and mortar business, you know, as a service based business or a product based business, or if that's through, you know, an online business where you're an author, speaker, coach, trainer, consultant, um, or, you know, maybe you're a culinary professional or an artist or, you know, whatever it is, you have a skill uh, that you can teach others. You have a passion that you can share with others. that's going to transform their life. That's going to solve a problem or create, you know, pleasure and opportunity in their lives. You know, that's, that's kind of where that whole mission, oriented entrepreneur, that purpose-driven entrepreneur, um, that passionate entrepreneurship comes from. So you got to understand that first and foremost. And, you know, then that's going to lead you into, you know, who your clients are, you know, who's your ideal client. So if you have identified a problem out there, then who is that, you know, ideal client that you're going to solve that problem for? And when I say ideal client, you know, a lot of people think, you know, very broad, you know, in a lot of different ways, but, you know, let's just say it's a, you know, physician who's working, you know, a hundred hours a week and wants to get away from that and be able to enjoy life and travel and do all that, but they have to work because they have to earn income. So, you know, what does that physician do? Where do they go? Where do they hang out? You know, what is it that they're interested in? What do they watch? What do they read? Where do they eat dinner? You know, what is their social networks? So you need to understand everything that makes them up. And then how are you going to help them transition from that life into the life that they want? And there's a couple of ways to do it. So one is for them, you know, invest, you know, physicians at their high salary, um, you know, there's passive investment opportunities. So if you're a real estate investor and you're raising money for deals, um, that's a great ideal client because they're looking for you. They're looking for a solution. I need to grow my wealth. I need to grow my money so that I can now, you know, enjoy retirement and, and have, you know, life and time on my own terms, or maybe they want to start a side business. Maybe they want to get into health and wellness, or maybe they want to get into, you know, their own practice or something like that. So maybe you can help physicians, you know, um, drive clients to their new practice and help them start their own practice. So you might have a specialty around that. Um, or, you know, let's just bring it down to another level. Let's say it's kids and you have programs to help kids, you know, with their learning. So then you got to think about, well, what kids am I targeting? Is it, you know, elementary school? Is it middle school? Is it high school? Because they're all very different. And they're all very different specific niches. So if you're going to get started with something like that, you want to really drill it down to an intimate level of who your ideal client is and start with one very um, focused niche of who it is that you're going to help and what it is they are looking for. So if there is a program to help kids pass the SAT test or get better scores on the SAT test, you need to understand who those kids are that are looking for that. And you need to be very clear about what your program does and the results that it delivers, you know, for them, and then how and where you can reach them. So, you know, those are the types of things that you want to think about in terms of, you know, niching down and finding your ideal clients. And it's really as simple as understanding who they are, what are their needs, what are their pain points, what is it that they're trying to solve, what is it that you do 
that can help them transform their life and get results because people aren't looking for information, education necessarily. They're looking for transformation. They're looking to get results. You know, we've got a lot of information coming at us these days. So what you really want to be able to do is to give people those results that they can, they can actually put into work quickly and get results in their life quickly. That's what people pay for. And, um, and then thinking about your ideal clients, you know, there's a couple of ways to go. You know, you can have, you know, high ticket, high end clients, you know, at a higher level, or you can have more volume, low ticket, you know, lower end purchase, you know, clients and problems that you're solving. And I'll tell you, you know, those are, those are all great areas, but the higher end clients are the most easy clients to work with, especially if you're selling a system or a course, or you're a coach or a consultant, something like that. And you have transformational skill sets. You have skills that will transform or solve a problem for somebody at a major level that helps them really make a shift or a change in their life or their business or helps them make more money or take their business to the next level or their, their life to the next level. You know, if you have people that are at the highest levels, they understand learning from others who have been there before them and they understand leveraging professionals to help them in their business. So, you know, I have, you know, my coaches, my mentors, I buy programs all the time. So, you know, I understand that there are systems out there. There are things that I just don't know. And you don't know what you don't know. And the things that you think you know that aren't true are the things that hold you back and cost you the most. So uh, the most successful people leverage the talent, the gifts, the experience, the wisdom of others. And in this day and age, it's through their programs and through their courses where um, the most successful people oftentimes get their information and they buy in. So when I go to somebody that I see as an expert and I'm like, they're doing what I want to do in a business, I go learn from them. And I go from the standpoint of a beginner and I put it all away and I approach it from a standpoint of, you know, I know nothing. You know, I want you to address me and treat me like I know zero about this business, zero about this industry, zero about how to accomplish this teach me everything you know. So that way I'm not missing anything. I'm not leaving anything between the cracks. Oftentimes so many people, you know, want to approach these things like they already know it or they already know everything and they just, they're resistant to advice and to learning and seeking, you know, and, and, and getting wisdom from others. And if you approach every opportunity, every engagement um, from the standpoint of a seeker of wisdom, there's so much that you can gain from those situations and, and those knowledge. Uh, of what these people are doing because they have a system and they have a process, right? So if somebody's achieving something that you want to achieve and you're not, look at what is the basis for that. And you're going to find that there's a system and a process that they're using to get consistent results. So let's take the online business world. You know, there are people earning six, seven, eight figures online consistently month in and month out, hundred thousand a month, million dollars a month, $10 million a month. It's happening. People are doing it. I'm doing it in my business. And every one of us have a complete system and process that we follow to number one, position ourselves, number two, attract the right clients, and number three, bring them into our programs, whatever they are, whether it's a course or a coaching program or, you know, uh, whatever, whatever that is, uh, you know, uh, educational seminar, an event, you know, things like that. And, um, you know, so, so that is very um, predictable system and process that, Everybody who's out there successful doing these types of things, whatever kind of business it is, just like a franchise, if you want to, you know, have a burger, burger joint, you know, you can either go open it and figure it all out, learn the hard way and lose a bunch of money, or you go buy a McDonald's franchise or a Five Guys franchise or, you know, Burger King franchise. They've been doing it forever. They have their system and it's all you got to do is follow the system and it's everything. So um, that is how you can reverse engineer success and, you know, how those processes, um, you know, proceed at the highest levels. And the questions are, what kind of programs do I need to put together and what can I do? So if you're an author, speaker, coach, you, you know, trainer, somebody like that, and you, you know, consult it, you've got a skill set that you want to get out there, then you've got some options. You can have, you know, some low dollar, like um, written books and programs and things like that, that you can sell for people uh, or sell to people. And you can drive traffic to those through Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, things like that. You know, but it's got to be good. It's got to be transform transformational. And there's an ROI on that for however much you spend driving the right kind of traffic and you got to know how to target those ads or you got to hire somebody to target those ads for you. You know, you can sell your books and your courses that way. You can have a digital online course, you know, that's, that's like a medium level price point it can be 400 to $1,500. Same thing. You're going to drive the right kind of traffic to that. Uh, then you could have a coaching program, whether it's a group coaching program or a one-on-one -on -one program at the 5,000 to $50,000 level and up. Those are going to require a phone call. 
So you've got to position yourself as an expert. People have to see that you know what you're doing. You have to drive traffic to a vehicle um, that kind of displays that you know what you're doing, that shows them you can solve their problem or create the outcome that they're looking for. And then you drive them to a consultation call that's either with you or with somebody that you have handling those calls in order to get them to enroll to the next level. So that's kind of how those types of programs and processes work. It's been done for years over and over and over, tried, tra tested, and true. The model for delivering clients into those systems has changed over the years. You know, it used to be the webinar thing, and that's evolved a little bit. Now there's some live events that work. Um, there's, you know, these challenges that people are doing. So there's a number of ways to get clients into your program um, very easily so that you can immediately get results, immediately help other people, and immediately get pro clients in your program way easier than, than it ever used to be. And, you know, one of the really effective um, ways to do it, you know, there's speakers out there that may be watching this. And, you know, everything is a stage. This interview right here that we're doing now is a stage. You know, stages aren't just out in public in front of people. Stages come in a number of ways. You could be on a podcast. You could record a webinar. You could do some video series. You could do, you know, interviews. You can do master classes. You can do live trainings, you know, paid or free. There's a number of ways that you can leverage your message to position yourself as an authority and an expert so people can get to know you, like you, and trust you before they ever meet you and have that stuff out there that you're driving traffic to so that, so that they get to understand you and your program and what you're doing before they ever reach out. So it's way easier now than it's ever been. And, you know, live events are, are really great. Once we get back to where we can hold live events again, you know, there's a great little system that I teach people how to hold um, very high profit, small events. So, you know, where you only have 10 to 20, maybe 50 people that are six figure events, you know, versus having hundreds to thousands of people at low ticket coming in, you know, this is where you've got 10, 20, you know, maybe up to 30, 40 people. That's a much higher price point, very small, high profit, high ticket, um, you know, small event. That's very intimate, very transformational. It can be done over one to three days, depending on your system and what it is that you're doing. Those work really great for, you know, consultants and coaches, um, uh, you know, speakers, teaching other people how to speak or whatever it is that they're doing to get their message out. So um, those are some of the ways that you can get started, grow and scale your business. You know, it's number one, you know, shifting your mindset, understanding what your mission and purpose is, you know, having a system in place, finding somebody or something that's successful that you're looking at, reverse engineer that and get involved. But the most important thing is you've got to be sincerely interested in other people and helping and serving other people. So when you're in a business, I don't care if it's online, offline, brick and mortar, online business, you're serving others. You're providing something to others, either a product or service, a good something. You have to be genuinely interested in serving and helping others. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. A lot of people think entrepreneurship is about working two hours a week and traveling the world, never having to do anything. You know, entrepreneurship is a responsibility. Entrepreneurship is an opportunity. Entrepreneurship is serving others and helping others get transformation in their lives and move from one point to another. And, you know, you have to come from a place of service and a place of wanting to help others and bring transformation in others, others' lives. So that's really what it's all about when you're talking about the journey of entrepreneurship from start, growing, scaling, and then getting to the next level and beyond. And it's something you can do your entire life, especially online, anywhere in the world, from anywhere in the world. Um, it, it's really a, an amazing, an amazing journey. So figure out what it is you're passionate about. Figure out what it is you're good at. What are your skill sets? What do people ask you for advice on? What do people compliment you about that you're doing in a way that can be monetized, a skill set? What is it that you want to share with the world that you feel like there's a need that can be filled and a transformation that you can help, that you can create a journey for somebody where they can get these results, they can solve a problem, and they can move the ball forward in their lives and get transformation, real transformation. So, you know, those are the types of things that you want to think about in terms of who you serve, what is it you do, and you want to start small, start niche, get it going, and then you can always expand from there. But the fastest, easiest way to get results is to pick a very clearly defined small niche, start there, get some people going in your programs, and then evolve from there. Well, that's great. I think that now more than ever with the new economy and with the economy changing um, from the airline industry to every every type of industry that was that's most hard hit with COVID, um, we don't know when it's gonna come back again. We have to have that mindset of um, independence and entrepreneurialism um, 
even if we're not starting our own business because we have to have that independence because um, a lot of industries are harder hit than others. So um, now more than ever, I, I was looking at the USPTO uh, news and there's a surge of um, patent filing and inventions right now related to um, COVID-19 and thinking ahead and thinking of solutions on how, like you said, to help people, to really genuinely help people. And it seems like it makes sense that if you get a coach or a mentor that can accelerate your skills and help you become a better helper um, and teach you the things that you don't know and take that product, take that solution, take that idea further, faster, whether it be um, you know, to high volumes or like you said, to small tight niches, um, it can work. Yeah, or a franchise. So if it's offline and that's your interest, you know, then a franchise is the way to go, you know, so that you're not reinventing the wheel or recreating or buy an existing business. So that's a great way to get started is, you know, buy an existing company and there's ways to do that without having to really even use any money, especially right now with the way the world's transforming. But, you know, this really all started post 2009. I mean, our world was fundamentally changed from 2009 on, just like it was back in the Great Depression. People were, people were affected, you know, 2009. This is really interesting what's going on now here in 2020 because the younger generation is really paying attention to, to everything that's going on. And our economy in so many ways is, is fundamentally changing from the remote working situation and people realizing how well that works. You know, being able to work remotely and not having to have an office and cram a bunch of people in there and get into elevators and go up and down buildings. And the retail landscape, that's been changing and transforming food service industry you know, the gig economy. So there's so many ways that people, you know, can earn a living, you know, through, through the gig economy, you know, providing a service that other people don't want to do or don't have, have time to do. And it could be anything from, uh, there's a lot of, we didn't get a chance to touch on them in there, but there's a lot of little business, business models you can start, you know, serving the needs and niches of others. Like I pay people to run my social media and my ad campaign. So you could start a digital marketing, a marketing agency. You could start a Facebook uh, management agency. Uh, and service. Uh, there's people out there that do transaction coordination for the real estate industry or other businesses, um, executive assistants, call centers, um, sales. You can do high ticket online, you know, for, for, for people for online sales courses and programs. You know, that's a thing where you just talk to people that want to enter in a program, you explain to them how it works and you get a commission for doing that. So, you know, and then you have the Uber drivers, you know, which is kind of, you know, odd right now, but you know, that'll come back. Um, you know, in food delivery and, you know, dog walking, you know, landscaping, handyman. I mean, just there's so many things, housekeeping, you know, uh, executive, you know, chef doing in-home chef services, shopping services. I mean, there's just all kinds of things. But in the online space, you know, if you need part-time income, man, there's tons of graphic design, you know, having people just doing graphics, thumbnails for videos and Instagram posts and, you know, things like that. So, there's a whole lot of ways, video editing. Video editing is huge. If you've got a skill where you're good at video editing, um, you know, you can make a thousand dollars a month just editing, editing video for people. You can make a thousand bucks a month, you know, per client running their social media for them and doing ads and things like that, building websites. So there's so many different ways right now that you can make an extra, you know, whatever you want to make, thousand to fifty thousand dollars a month, depending on how much time you have, you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars at a time residual income for client-based services like that, as well as having books, courses, programs, and things like that. If you're an author, speaker, coach, consultant, whatever, you know, there, there's programs that you can create. There's events that you can do, even online, that will generate six figures, you know, for, for those types of things. So, you know, the key is, you know what to do, you know you need to do it. The next thing is to just do it. So how did I start 12 companies in seven years? How did I build a company from scratch to 30 million with no money, no backing? I couldn't even get a loan from a bank. I went out and did it. I didn't take no for an answer. I didn't listen to people that told me you couldn't do it. You didn't go to college. You don't know what you're doing. You've never owned a business. Nobody in your family are, are entrepreneurs. You know, I had a comfortable corporate job that I had to quit and, you know, take a risk and go do something else. And, uh, and you know, I kind of started part-time. I had some businesses part-time while I was working full-time in the restaurant industry. I had a little construction business on the side, kind of, all you know, the whole way through. But in 1997, when I stepped out, when I said, I'm done with the corporate world, I'm going all in, you know, this is it. And, uh, you know, I went out and how'd I do it? Service-based business. I started as a handyman remodeling contractor. And, uh, you know, I was making more money in one day than I was making in a week working in the corporate world. Once I just said, you know what, I'm going to go do this. 
So it can be done. You can do it. You have to want to do it. You got to find the right vehicle. You have to have the right system and just, you know, reverse engineer the success of others and just follow that. It's really that simple. That sounds great. It sounds awesome. And I've heard you speak a lot on social media and just in our own conversations. And um, can you just hit on some of the points you, you, you talk about, um, you know, having someone believe and coach and give you the um, encouragement when you don't feel like you know, maybe you're, you're hesitant, fearful, you've got hesitations about jumping in and making the transition and making that transformation what are the maybe the top three or four things someone's going to have to put in place tools processes technologies resources people what what would you say are the top top three things that you have to get in place in order to make this transition yeah so number one a skill set so you have to you have to be good at something you have to have a skill or service uh or the ability to do that that, that somebody needs so that's number one you got to be solving a problem or creating an opportunity or, or helping somebody, you know, with, with, you know, bringing pleasure into their lives. So maybe you're an entertainer, an artist, whatever. So you got to have that. Number one, it's a vehicle. I call it a vehicle. You have to have something that, you know, you can monetize that's a vehicle, that's a skill set. Number one. Number two, you have to have a passion and desire to serve others. That's what it's all about. It's all about serving others, creating value, bringing value to others. And, you know, number three, yeah, you definitely need a coach and a mentor to help you. If you're stepping out on your own or if you're in a business now and you're trying to get it to the next level, you know, just get somebody that's already done it and learn from them and let them teach you and let them help you because they know what's possible that you don't know. They know what to do that you don't know. And then sometimes all it takes is one little idea, you know, one little shift that just changes the entire trajectory of your life and business. You know, I hear that all the time from people. The number one thing I hear from people all the time is, man, I wish I'd have met you years ago. I've wasted all this time, you know, doing the same thing. I talked to a guy the other day, he's been in the business 20 years doing what he's doing. And he's, he hasn't been able to get to the next level. He's never made more than a couple hundred grand a year. And he's finally at the point in his life where he's in his 60s. He's like, you know what? I need to hire a mentor to help me get to the next level. I've been resisting it. I've been going the hard way. I've been stubborn. I've been beating my head against the wall. You know, I'm ready now. I know that that will change my life and fast track me. I had one conversation with him that now he'll make over a million dollars this year. One conversation. He was already in the business to do it. He just didn't know how to do it. And that's for anybody out there that's in your business for yourself, no matter what you're doing, if you're already making a hundred to 200,000 a year, you could turn that into a million, especially if you're in an online business or a coach, mentorship, author, speaker, something like that. Um, you know, or digital agency or, you know, one of the other businesses I talked about online, particularly online. You can scale that quickly. And, you know, if you're not there and you want to get there, whatever that is, you know, from 100 to 300 to 500 to a million, wherever that is, people are doing it all day, every day. It's not as hard as it used to be. It's very easy. The information is out there. So that coach, that mentor, number one, shows you these things you just don't know. And number two, they believe in you till you can believe in yourself for yourself. So, you know, we just come in and we just squash any negative, you know, thoughts that anybody has in their head. And I hear it all the time. Like for instance, you know, even one of my uh, one of my newer clients in my real estate program the other day, we were we were on a coaching call, and you know, he said, "Man, I just can't find any um, you know private money lenders out there. I'm not having any luck finding any private money lenders." I'm like, um, or not private money, cash buyers. So he's you know trying to find you know investors, cash buyers, and I said, "Well, what are you doing to find them?" Well, you know, nothing. Just kind of talking to my same people in my network. I said, "Okay, how do you expect to find anything new doing the same thing you've been doing?" I, you know, I said, here's the specific things you need to do. Go to the courthouse, get a list of the transactions that closed in cash, find the similarities in them. Your cash buyers might use multiple entities, but they're going to have the same address. You know, find out the cash transactions. If you don't have time to go to the courthouse, you can hire somebody, you know, like a title searcher for 25 bucks an hour that will go get you that list. And if you don't want to do that, you can order the list online. You know, so if you're not reaching out, you know, if you're in a business and you need clients and you're not talking to clients, you're not going to get any clients. So, you know, if you are looking for changes, transformation, or new results, or a new outcome in your life or your business, and you're not doing anything different than you've been doing, you're not going to get anything new. So just those little mindset shifts, you know, where, where people will literally believe that. They'll have that thought in their head, gosh, I just can't find, you know, any new clients. I'm a realtor. I just can't get new clients. I can't get listings. I can't get buyers. So they don't do anything about it. They just have convinced themselves that they can't, so they don't. When, you know, talk to more sellers, talk to more buyers, you know, go where they are, 
find them, do something to attract them, you know, get yourself out there. You're, you know, if you're in the real estate business, you're in the contact, it's a contact sport. You're in the business of making contacts, talking to people. Now you can't physically literally get out there and do it right now, but you can do it online in so many ways. I mean, LinkedIn is so easy to network. You know, Facebook is so easy to network. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of ways to reach people these days in every business, every industry, everywhere. So these are the things that a mentor does for you. They help you just put, put away those beliefs. They give you encouragement. They give you support. They give you the tools, training system, support, and the belief in yourself to get out there and be successful and to make that transformation in your life that you just haven't been able to get over. And I was very fortunate enough in my career um, that I, early in my career, I learned, I don't know what I don't know. And all I know is what I know. And that if I keep doing the same thing, all I'm going to get is everything I've always got. So, you know, that's an old Zig Ziglar quote, right? If you always do what you've always done, you'll only be what you have become. You know, if you always think what you always thought, you'll only get what you've always got. So I learned that very young. And uh, so I've always been a seeker of wisdom. And I've always reached out to people to learn from them and find out what they're doing. And, you know, I've hired mentors. I've read their books. Um, I've gone and spent time with people. I've done deals with people. I've been involved in business with people. I've bought franchises. So I've learned from others. That's how I created success quickly. And that's how you create success quickly. It's a system and a process and it's repeated over and over and over. That's great. The change creates more change. So, um, thank you, Greg. Um, I really enjoy every, every talk with you. I learned so much and you're a great mentor, um, to me and my business and everyone that I know that, that I introduced to you is just amazed and wants more time with you and just wants, <laughs> wants to be a part of the changes that you're creating in their careers and their personal development and everything. So thank you for being that person to so many people <laughs> and inspiring people because we need it now more, now more than ever, I think. Um, and um, you're right. You don't know what you don't know. And if you keep doing the same thing, you're going to create the same result and not anything new. So, yeah, um, it's really interesting. It's, it's, it's really a gift. What I do every day, it's a gift and a blessing to be able to help people. And what I love more than anything else is, is working with people and seeing that light bulb go off. And they're like, whoa, I, you know, I just hadn't even thought about it that way. Or I never saw this before. Or I never, you know, just, just those little shifts, like I said, that little transformation that I hear over and over and over, like, man, one conversation with you, it just, that's all it took. And, you know, it really is. And it's usually on the first one. You know, when I get with somebody and we, we do this Zoom call and we record it, we dig into their business or their life or whatever it is that's going on. And instantly I'm able to pinpoint exactly what's holding them back, exactly why it's holding them back, and exactly what they need to do right now to get immediate transformation. Now that tickles me more than anything else, any amount of money I could make. I've done business deals all over the place, made all kinds of money. That is more exciting and more fun to me than any business deal I can do. And I just, that's just how I'm wired, you know, and it's, I just, I love it. And I hear it over and over and over. That's the two things. I wish I'd have met you years ago. And man, one conversation changed my entire life, you know? So that, that's what fills me. And it's, and it's, and it's a gift. And it's something that I do not take lightly in terms of it's a gift given to me. Um, you know, that I do not take lightly and, and I just love it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you. And, um, very wise words said today, I think. And, um, uh, thank you for continuing to just inspire so many others and with what you do and, um, not very many people can do that. And we need people like you to help encourage and inspire us to accelerate our careers and get us to the next level and get us out of whatever we're not believing and get us to believe in the things we need to focus on. So, well, thank you. Um, 